When an app that you love comes out with new features, you don't have to use those new features. And sometimes you shouldn't use those new features. My favorite to-do app is Things 3. And today, Things 3 came out with a new version with some new features that most people should not be using. Let me explain why not. Here we're looking at the blog of Cultured Code, the people who make Things 3. And there's a new blog post that says, Shortcuts Reloaded. Things gains automation superpowers today with a huge update for Apple Shortcuts. Now, if you didn't know this already, Shortcuts is an app for your iPhone, your iPad, or your Mac that lets you automate certain things. And Things now supports more automations within Shortcuts. Culture Code says we've prepared a gallery with some great shortcuts. That's real Apple language right there. Great new features for you to try out and you can also build your own. I think you should not do those things. And let's, let me explain why. What we're going to do is just take a look at the shortcuts gallery. So these are some example shortcuts that the people at Culture Code have created to show you what you might be able to do with the Apple Shortcuts app and Things 3. Now, some of these things are super basic. For example, you can create a shortcut. And by the way, you can run a shortcut from the Shortcuts app or you can fire it off with Siri and there's a couple of other ways to do it. And one of them is create a new to-do with your errand, errand tag already applied. So this sounds like, oh, that's cool. You know, this is a way that I don't have to manually assign this tag. But at the same time, how easy is it to add an errand tag to a new to-do? Let me pull up quick entry and say, uh, go to the mall and I can hit Command Shift T and write errand. There we go. I mean, th this happened faster than I can run a shortcut. Um, this is a very basic example. So let me go to maybe something that's a little bit more complicated. Um, prepare for events. Create to-dos for events on your calendar with a reminder to prepare. So what this shortcut does, if you install it, is it looks for some events on your calendar and then it creates um, a to-do inside Things 3 that says prepare for such and such event. But again, I can just pull up quick entry and say prepare for the meeting tomorrow. And if I want to, I can even link to the meeting on my calendar. It just doesn't save you any time to do it this way. Um, here's another good one. Do weekly review. Split your screen between things and calendar for a weekly review. So when you fire off this particular uh, automation, what it's going to do is it's going to put things next to your calendar. Now let me show you if I want to put things, um, which I have right here, if I want to put that next to my, you know, let's say in this case, the browser, I just do it like this. And, and now I have the two apps side by side. So how long did that take to me? Five seconds, right? Um, let me just move things back to full screen and get back to my browser. So these are things that while it is cool that you can automate certain things, they're really small beans. It doesn't meaningfully affect your productivity, right? And let me just do one more example. It says run year review. This is a shortcut that the people at Culture Code have created. If you install it to your shortcuts app, I'm not, I'm not even going to show you how to install these things because I really don't think you should spend your time on this. Um, it runs a year review. It generates an overview of all projects that you've completed in a given year with links to each of those projects so that you can review what you did last year. Sounds cool, right? Sounds helpful. Okay. But if I go to things three, and let me just expand the sidebar and I just hit command F to start searching. I can also just start typing, by the way, and I go to logged projects. Actually here, I can see what I did, um, which projects I've completed month by month and, and, and year by year. You know what I'm saying? So this already exists in Things 3. Now, that's kind of my big point here. Things 3 is already so good. It's already so easy to use and it has all of these great features that you don't need to automate anything about it. Automation is cool. And by all means, if you feel like playing around and seeing what you could do, and maybe you're a developer and these kinds of things excite you, go for it. But don't equate automating small tasks with real productivity. If you do care about real productivity, if you care about that in the big sense of the word, I actually have a free mini course for you. It's called the Essentials of Big Picture Productivity. It's the Essentials version of my larger course, Big Picture Productivity, where I talk about what is meaningful productivity and, and what does that mean to you and how can you achieve that over the long term? Much better to step back and reflect on that rather than trying to automate these small day-to-day -day tasks that are super easy to do in Things 3 already anyway. Um, I guess I just have to say, hey, sorry people at Culture Code, your app is too good. It doesn't need any automation. <laughs> so stay away from automation unless it's fun for you to play around with. But you know, don't use it as an excuse to procrastinate on your most important work. Thanks for watching. 
check out that free mini course that I mentioned. And of course, if you are new to Things3 and you want to learn how to use Things3 to organize your day-to-day to-dos to get more organized and productive, you can also enroll in my Things3 course. Hey, have a great day. Ciao. Thank you.